What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I'm joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Nate Green. Nate, how's Halo treating you? It's fine. Just, just a little rain so far, so we're good. What's, what's so far so good? What's worse, the series that the Angels just had, or yes. the weather? The series we just had. To watch. All right. Figured I'd have it to. Ma- I think it makes it worse that I was there for the nightcap. You're kind of there. No, no, I was there. Kind of, kind of. So with all that being said, guys, just want to thank you so much for watching and listening to this podcast. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you have not already, we do appreciate it quite a bit. Let us know in the comment description down below how you're feeling about the Angels. Um, and actually, how you feel about Nolan Shanwell, because that's going to be the first thing that we talk about here, Nate. So Nolan Shanwell gets the call a little a little surprising, I'd say. Just just a tad bit surprising. Um, I got the call, the, got, got the text message the night before, like, hey, don't know how uh, if this is true or not, but keep an eye out for it. You know, so I was I was surprised to say the least of it. But thoughts off the bat for this right here. I think we're on the same page here, but I'll let you say it because I don't want to. <laughs> uh, panic button, panic button, panic button. Um it, it really feels like Perry's trying to save his job right now. It, yeah. it honestly does. Like he says, Hey, I'm going all in. I'm going to go make sure this team's a playoff team. And we can't even win a, a freaking series in the month of August. I think we have one. Um, but yeah, we just, we just can't be good teams. It is what it is. Um, you know, when you look at him, it, it is nice to know that there is a six, four David Fletcher out there, um, that can play first base. It's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, we've seen, that, that's what he is like he he's david fletcher and it's there's it's more, fine there's a little more there's more upside he, he will actually walk that. yeah that's yeah. the one thing that david fletcher doesn't do is he doesn't walk but shanuel will at least take a walk or two but yeah not a lot of hard contact it looks like i'm just trying to put the ball in play instead of like dude you're six four like 235 pounds or something like that like it's okay to hit for a little bit of power like it, it you're hit, you're yeah the the 75 exit velo isn't going to play it, especially at first base it's just not so i i think he wasn't ready um it, you can look at the numbers all you want but if you really dive into the numbers in double a like the exit velo wasn't there the the power wasn't there um all those type of things that are important weren't there and it, it just felt like the the one thing that is there is like he had a good eye which is fine and he was getting hits, but yeah, it, it just felt like there were other guys you could have called up who are going to do similar things without having to waste a 40 man spot, start his clock. Um, and I know you'll get into the reason why starting his clock the time they did is an absolute n- nightmare unless they do something about this. But yeah, I'm, I'm not super excited about seeing him. I'm happy for him. This is awesome that, you know, he's up here, but like, we're not a playoff team and this isn't the place to develop right now. I think I talked about it last time. This is not, you shouldn't be still developing guys in the bigs. Like either they are ready or they are not. And he's not ready. I do. I do agree with that. I don't think, I don't think he is ready. I think very, very good hit tool. I think he's, I think he ends up being a, a good hitter. Um, I said this on Twitter, the difference between being a good hitter and a great hitter, and I got killed for this, a good hitter and a great hitter in today's game is the power. Um, and everybody started throwing out guys, old school guys, by the way, got the Rod Crew. What about Rod Crew? Or what about Tony Gwynn? What about, you know, this guy, that guy, and another? It's like the difference, again, between being a good hitter, because Nolan Channel is going to be a good hitter. I think that's fair to say. I think I think it's all there to be a good hitter and a great player, an elite player. I think I said good hitter the or a great hitter um, the first time. An elite player is that power, you know? Like Mike Trout, Shohei Otani. You can even say guys like Ronald Acuna, Vlad Jr., Freddie Freeman. Those type of guys are good hitters. You know, they're good hitters with power, which makes them elite which makes them some of the best in the game, you know, 30 home run guys. I think all those guys probably have about 30 home runs or are going to have 30 home runs this year. 
Not Who isn't Vlad. gonna have thirty? Not Vlad. Vlad's not gonna have thirty home runs this year. No. I'm off a little bit then, but you get what I'm saying. Vlad's had a bad year. That's fair. You get what I'm Power saying. Wise. You, you get what you get what I'm saying though on that on on that note. I, I think that I think that there's a lack of power with Nolan Chanwell, and not a bad thing. Not not necessarily a bad thing either. Um, if you can put bat on ball and you know put put the ball in play and get hits and you have a good eye, I mean that's a pro- prototypical leadoff hitter, and I'm fine with that. But to be an elite elite player in today's game, which a lot of people are gonna think that he is an elite player in today's game when he's batting 290, 300, you know is that power you know i think he has 10 home run power i think that's i think it's fair to say at the moment there's 10 home run power doesn't mean he he can't turn into you know 20 30 home run power guy but with the swing the way it is right now um it's 20 30, it's a 10 home run power you know um and a guy that's probably going about 280 to 300 um you know he's going to have his fair share of walks so and I, I was talking to you this night before he got called up i said what do you, what about him just leading off you know, you get on base in front of a guy like Shohei Otani or Mike Trout and Anthony Rendon. And, and I I know you're fixated on, well, you picked him in the first round and you gave him that amount of money, like he needs to be a superstar. I well, get- not even just a superstar. Like, I, I want him to be an all-star. Like, you you took him top, top 11, 11 in the draft. Like, I want the dude to be an all-star. Like, especially since, like, uh, the the thing with with this that like really frustrates me is it feels like Perry was telling everyone like hey I'm smarter than everyone this guy's a top top ten pick like you guys are idiots for letting him slide this far um, by giving him know, that like amount the, of money that that's kind of the way that it felt is like you guys have him twenty five to thirty like watch me take him eleven and be a superstar it's like eh. to back up your point by the way Luis Ariz is hitting three fifty seven. He is not even in the MVP conversation right now. Yeah. Matt Olson is hitting 269. He is in the MVP conversation. He might be third or fourth, but he is in the MVP conversation because he has 43 bumps. Um in, in today's and- game, in today's game, but uh, Nolan Shanwell just doesn't doesn't make sense. Um not a bad he's thing. Fine. Though. He's, yeah, fine. he's fine. It's just not, it's not it, a- it just would have been nice to say, hey. We see that you can put the ball in play. That's great. We can see you have a great eye. For the last month of double A, we want to see if you can hit six, seven homers. And like we want to sell out and see what the power does. And if you swing and miss too much, then maybe we go back to, hey, just put the ball in play. But maybe he hits 10 homers and it's like, yeah, the swing and miss, it's worth it. You know, like the swing and miss is worth it to have 10 homers in a month. I don't know. I just think that would have been the next step on the development train if I were if I were in charge. Just like, hey, let's let's see if there's power there because you are six four and two hundred and thirty five pounds and you did hit for a little bit of power at Florida Atlantic. And you know, there are some interesting things with, with you. Like yeah. that that's why I'm a little like, what are we doing here? And to add insult to injury, we're we're not making the playoffs. Like he's not the difference between the Angels making the playoffs and them not making the playoffs like you could have called up trey cabbage who's already on the 40 man and done the exact same thing you'd be in the exact same spot yeah he wouldn't be leading off for you but like who really cares at this point who leads off mm-hmm. we just lost 18 to 4 and we only scored because they put in cooper criswell who shouldn't really be on an mlb roster he wasn't even good enough to make the angels roster so that that should tell you enough now what about those people that say that this team already has enough guys that swing and miss and Nolan Chanwell is the perfect fit. I, I get it. I do. But like, I think positions matter. And when you're asking guys and, and the other thing that matters too, is you got a lot of guys that are leaving in free agency, right? Like um, Hunter Renfro has gone in free agency. He's, he's one of the big swing and miss guys. Uh, Shohei Otani. He hasn't really been too, like, yes, he has been a swing and miss guy. Um, but he's, that, Shohei, he's also Shohei Otani, and he's doing. Yeah, some, I was gonna say if if that pisses people off, like it's just facts. But um, he has been a swing and miss guy, which is fine. Um, I I think you look at Randall if Mike Trout's healthy, swing and miss guy. if Anthony Rendon's healthy, Jury's a big swing and miss guy too. But like you can 
you can live and die with one or two of those guys. You can't live and die with, with four or five, six of those guys, because that's what it feels like is like, you have Renfro, you have Ward, you have Jury. Um, you can be, you can be really hot and be yeah, really good. Moniac is a, a swing and miss guy. Like you can go through it and be like, wow, there's like seven or eight. Thice is a swing and miss guy. Like you go through it and it's like, wow, there's like seven or eight guys that are swing and miss guys. But with what you have leaving, you, you're going to lose a lot of power and, and things like that. And I think it's so easy to go find a guy that doesn't swing and miss. I mean, we, we have a guy in New York. David Fletcher doesn't swing and miss. He doesn't walk, but he doesn't swing and miss. Yeah. So if that's like what you're worried about, then I, I, I don't know. That, that's interesting to me if that's the case. Again, there were so many other guys on the board at 11. And not only did you give this guy full slot, you took him at 11 because he's one of the best pure hitters in the draft and, you know, going to be the quickest guy to the bigs, things like that. And it's like, you play first base. Like we need to have a little bit of power out of you. Like we're, we're running Andrew Velasquez and Luis Regifo at shortstop. Like those guys shouldn't be, Regifo should not play shortstop barely rosterable right now and Andrew Velasquez shouldn't even be rosterable so yeah I think you're just in a really really bad spot with the with the 40 guys on the roster that that are you know from the bigs all the way down to AAA and things like that that it it really doesn't matter like and, and can we talk about the one big issue with calling them up on the day they called them up no because it actually wasn't that okay it can be so what Nate's alluding to. They call him up on day 45. If you hit 45, if you it's over 45. So if he hits that 46th day, technically that's when it counts. So he could be there 45. Um if if you're there 46 days, you are no longer rookie eligible, which means you cannot be rookie of the year. Um, which I think like to be fair, Nolan Chanwell would probably get some votes rookie of the year if he went out and like 10 home runs, he played the whole season. 10 home runs. He was like a 290 hitter, played solid defense. Like, Nate, we're talking rookie of the year here, right? Like, he doesn't have know, to be, a, like, he doesn't have to be a superstar. Plus, you, you gotta, you gotta finish top three, though. Plus, I, I think that, I mean, 10 home runs, 290, like, you're putting up probably 100. Jackson Holiday's probably gonna get called up to start next year. He's gonna be well, the, the runaway favorite. So now you're, well, I don't looking. actually think that, I don't actually think that minor leagues are very good right now. Like, yeah, you have a dude in Jackson Holiday, but the rest of it's like, whatever like i don't think there are very many guys that can really step in there i mean if you want to make the argument like there's i don't know how many guys get signed from japan you know but like that's where the argument might start is like oh um but yeah like i I mean if you think that he has a chance to win rookie of the year which i think i think he does have a little bit of a chance to place in the top three um then yes like that 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 would have that would have been a huge issue there if they would have called him up a day earlier but the fact that you called him up on day 45 um it makes my it makes my um uh prospect rankings a little bit a little bit nicer than because ohapi's ohapi's definitely going to be uh out of it shanwell will be one day one game from being removed so you can look at a guy like nelson rod as the hot prospect in the angels farm system which is not horrible but not great by any means so um with that being said my report on nolan shanwell is going to be good I think he's going to be pretty decent defensively. I think he's probably going to stay at first base. I don't see him playing any other spots, especially since Angels haven't tried him in any other spots. Um, biggest thing for me, I said it, I, I don't know. I don't think there's that much power there. Um, it, it's all comes, it all happens in the lower half. Like there's a lot of time to, there's a good chunk of time to develop that um, and get stronger. And I think that's what the Angels will have him do. I think they have him come into camp, you know, slimmer, but bigger, if that makes sense. Like, because <laughs> he's he, he's kind of a man amongst or a boy amongst man's that man out there um same thing with Neto too Neto looks a little small so it, it's a, it's a development thing there so um yeah I think I think there's a little bit of power definitely in there I think there's at most 20 home run power um he doesn't remind me of Matt Olson so I swear if anybody says that he looks he, he reminds you anything of Matt Olson I just I just don't see it at all I don't think the power is quite the same as as it's it's a different it's a different profile yeah they like they bat the same and everything but um i think he has a chance to be a a a good major leaguer like at the time of the draft i was like anybody but shanwell um now it's a little bit different it's like well this guy can probably hit he can probably probably sticks as your leadoff hitter he's a 
he might be a 375 on base guy, which is which is actually really nice. Um, one of the better we one of the better uh, players in the league. Um, plus, you know, you slot him in front of Trout, and if you sign Shohei Otani, like it's not a not a horrible guy to put there. Plus, at league minimum and everything like that. So, um, but yeah, I, the the power Still is the love the no speed leading off too. Like yeah, that doesn't he's not fast. He's and when I say he, someone's not fast, like I actually mean they're not fast. Like I'll yeah. kind of beat around the bush with some guys. Like I like he's got some speed or something like that. No, like Shanwell's actually not fast. Um, which is, which is what it is. You know, he's a big dude, but you'd expect a little bit more power there. And I just, I don't know if there's a lot of power. Um, he swings it. He swings it like somebody, um, from Asia. Like he, he really does. Like you watch it and he hits very, it's very fly front half open. Um, which is, which is fine. Like if you get that, that in pit, that middle end pitch, but Tampa pitched him really, really well. He got a couple nice, he got a couple hits, but I thought Tampa pitched him well. You bust him in, bust him in, and you throw away. Um, I think you get him. I think you're going to get him there all the time. Good bat speed though. So I think he can get to that inside pitch a little bit better, um, which is the hope that there is a little bit of power there, but um, man, it's, it's a lot of put bat on, put ball on ground. So you got anything else on Shanwell before we get to uh, talking? Uh, you're probably going to rant here in this series, I would assume. So. Um, no, I, I think uh, you hit, you hit that nail on the head with the last comment of a lot of ground balls, uh, yeah. a lot of ground balls. So with that being said, let's get into the negative Nate segment. The Angels lose two of three against the Tampa Bay Rays, including a very tough one. Was it 18 to four, 17 to four, I think. 18 to four. 18 to four. That's a, that's a tough one for sure. Um, you almost set a record. I know. Well, especially, especially since it felt like the Angel had like game one and game two, it felt like even dating back to previous series, the Angels have played Tampa pretty well for how good of a team Tampa is, has been. It feels like they've played them. Decently well. I know they swept them last year and the Angels were like rolling at that point. You had the Reed Detmers no hitter and all that. Um, but like I said, just feels like they play them well. Um, you get the Shohei Otani uh, cycle a couple years ago. Just feels like they play Tampa well. Um, not this series though. You know, game one, game one's a tough loss for sure. Um, I have a little bit of a rant on 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 game one. Game two, I thought they I thought they played. Game two, I thought they played pretty well. You know, they came out, um, were able to I hit. I didn't think they played that well, honestly. Well, I, I thought, I thought they, they played. They won the game. Well. That's great. But, like, I didn't think they played that well. So, Seth didn't throw the ball that well. Um, they you, they you, didn't. They, they kind of scored early, and that was it. Like, it was, it was eh. Like, you're able to, they, you're able to shut the door when needed. It was, it was a very typical Angel game of, hey, we yeah. scored a bunch early. We should be good the rest of the game. And then just, we yep. didn't get a hit after the, after the seventh or something like that. It was like, eesh. Yeah, so, and, game, I, yeah, and I was going to say, in, in game three, moving on to game three, we aren't going to talk about that, but I also have a little bit of rant to, on, on that side of stuff. So um, going back to game one, for me, for me, it's putting guys in, in the right situation to succeed. Um, and Carlos Estevez was just not put in the right situation there to succeed. A guy that had been, so for me, like, and I look at this and it's like, it's a guy that has been struggling and you get a really good inning out of him in the ninth. It's like, you I did not say, get a good inning. I wouldn't say it's really a good inning. I think you, you, you got know, lucky. You had you had progress. You had progress. You, you got lucky. First you and progress? third, infield in, nobody out, and they turn a progress crazy triple play that who knows what the guy at third yeah. was doing. What the heck is that guy doing? Is that a Rosa Rain? I don't Anyways. know. It was terrible base running, whoever it was. I don't remember. But you got lucky. And it's like, okay. Yes. Um I, you oh. didn't do great. Let's run you back out there. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I agree with that like it wasn't a great inning however progress in the right direction for a pitcher that had been struggling a lot fair to say like yes i mean he, the angels turned a triple play which was sick by the way they turned a triple play um but you leave it at that right it's like man it's like carlos like come back in the dugout like we're done here like this was it like good progress we put it we threw a zero up on the board like we'll go get them next next time for you you went out you threw him out there another inning he throws 40 pitches which is horrific for me like the most what pitches he's doing? thrown in, in an appearance what you, you, you are you well you, just like what are we doing there like yeah. 40 well, pitches the big the yeah 40 pitches is tough the biggest thing for me is like you don't have anybody else to go that, to put in after that like that's that's putting guys in a tough situation to succeed like you have to throw you have to let Estevez go back out there um but at the same time like I would not have thrown Estevez back out there um that, that By was, the way, that it was, was Yandy Diaz. Yandy. Yeah, it was cool. It was a cool triple play. I'll say. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, but 
like you you take a step in the right direction there with the step it's like hey man we're coming out of this like at a on a high note like we just turned a triple play for you You had your team back you up you threw up a zero like you're done for the day like let's let's worry about it on on monday when we when we come back and we have a safe situation or tuesday or something like that i mean he could have come back sunday with third or saturday with 13 pitches like knowing sunday is going to be an off day he could have pitched in one of those games exactly so like that that's the biggest thing for me is putting guys in the right the right spot to succeed However, with that being said, that also like puts up like a another like I'm gonna throw a throw down the reverse card there, the reverse Uno card, and say like the we've we've talked about it in the past. You want to go out there and you want to win games, and Estevez is probably that guy that goes and gets you goes and tries to get you a W there, right? Like that's your best option to go win a game. Like mm. other than that, mm. you you throw an Aaron Loop out there, man. Like other which, than that, which that's hard. who that's who it should have been. It should have been 100 percent because then that that like like. It's a tough situation there. You got to put guys really, in the right Okay. Here's my problem with Win it. Here's, here's, here's my problem with it. Okay. Yeah. And I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to make it sound like it isn't as bad as it really is. Okay. Carlos Estevez didn't pitch good in the night. He, no. he didn't. He, but you take it away pick, as a positive. That's my thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's you're fine. Done, like, I mean, the first guy hit the ball. Yandy hit the ball 110 off the bat, the first guy. So, yeah, the next one was a, a flare single and then, you know, a lucky double play. And, you're like, okay, great job. You're done. You threw up a zero. The other thing that pisses me off, you run him back out there for the top of the 10th, right? Yeah. He hits the first guy. Oh, you know what? He probably still has his stuff. You know, like first guy goes yeah. one, oh, after, one 10. After like, after like everything, yeah. like he threw like two or three over the backstop. Yeah, it, it's was, like, it was oh. up. He just wasn't feeling and, it. And then let's, let's drill Paredes. And it's like, oh, you know what? I think he still got it. You know? Oh, hey. There's a lefty up, and Jose Siri has already hit, so you know they don't have like too much on the bench to to play with. And it's like, huh? Do we have anyone in the pen? No. Is Aaron Loop even? I don't think like, Aaron. Anybody was warming up at that. Is time, Aaron though. Loop still sitting on the bench? And I'm and oh. I think Aaron Loop is terrible. And <laughs> Jaime Berea, not not a big Jaime Berea guy either. But it's like both those guys still sitting on the bench. Yeah. yeah. Not not even a a, a J band. Like, come on. Like, Can we get up, at least a J band? Yeah. And, and no, we we let him pitch, and it just goes from bad to worse. It goes after the hit by pitch. He uh, goes. You don't, you don't even need to go over this. It, yes, but it was like, how, 40 pitches, how do you 40 let pitches. him stay in for hit by pitch, single, nah. single, and then forty three pitches is like, oh, let's take him out now. Like, yep. <laughs> no, I get it. I, 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 I'm, I'm with you on that one. Like I said, this is why I wanted to pick this part because that that was one of the things that pissed me off the most. However, like throws like a contradiction it's like do you want to win which first off the angels aren't in a great spot to to win right now anyways like i would want them to be tanking in a sense i know they went out and they sold they they bought at the deadline but like i want the best damn draft pick that i can get at the moment because you're not going to the playoffs with the way you're playing baseball right now however do you want to win games is the next thing right like we talked about but the, but the way like, that carlos estevez has been pitching does he give you the best chance to win the game right no now? Uh, especially not. after the first guy gets hit no, like I, and once I said that, the like first guy build, gets you hit, you're, you're, yeah. yeah. Once the first guy gets hit, it's I, I don't care whoever who's uh, the fastest guy to get ready. You're in because yeah. that should not be how this thing rolls. Yeah, game two, you know, they got every freaking break in the book in that game. I don't think they threw a strike in the ninth inning, hey, which is win, fantastic. Wins, wins a win, man. Just oh, just absolutely. Take, take a dub. I take a dub. I really don't think they threw a strike in the ninth inning to no. get the dub, but. Huge, and then you go into game three. That was that. This this game pissed me off more than anything. If you guys watch this podcast, you know. Oh man, I'm not upset about. I I don't get upset about losing. I really don't, unless it's bad. They didn't baseball. play good. They they played horrific. Like uh, Jordan Adams out. Looks Jordan like Adams a, makes two errors and like bad errors. Like yeah, not good errors. I mean, it just it, it seemed like like there were so yeah. many errors that should have been errors. I was going to say, you know what play. the funniest thing is? The, they only had two errors and there yeah. were about five errors in the game. There were a lot of errors. They just, they it, if when it rained, it poured and it was not, it, it was just bad in general. Like that, Round ball to ring beef foot short. He throws it high. Hey, you know what? That's a base hit. Yeah. That, you know, 99. That actually that gets, that gets made by every other major league shortstop in baseball, except for Luis rank Yeah. And we're going to give the, that a hit. What was the play after that? They got a hit. Oh, a oh, jury up the middle. Ground ball. Ground ball the jury. He dives, yeah. has 10 minutes to throw the guy out at second and throws it in the left center, they give left him a field. Hit. And it's like, not it's even like, a fielder's choice. They give him a hit on that. It's like, yeah. Oh, what are we doing? And that's at that you, point, you could have used like, 
he had time to get up and flip brutal. it. Like he yeah. didn't even have to throw it from his wallet. Like he could have yeah. got up and flipped it. That was tough. Like, yeah, was like I, I, I'll stick with it. I'll always say this. Like I don't get upset about losing games. If if it's good competitive baseball and you're losing and you're losing games, like that's fine, you know. But like it felt like in in the first game uh, of the series, like it was good baseball up until like you started playing stupid, and then game three, it was just stupid bad baseball and that that's what kills me that's what kills me the most so you got anything one more thing one more thing about that game so i was there um which (laughs) yeah terrible game to be at but um i i heard i had some people watching the game and they said oh you know the announcers are talking about jaime berea hopefully finishing this off and it's like why why is jaime berea coming in in the fifth inning to finish this game we have a doubleheader we have an extra guy for the doubleheader, Jimmy Herget had you're not, not pitched you're in. Not playing, you you're should not have playing. literally just used Jimmy Herget until his arm fell off, because he's he's getting sent down right after the game, right? Like there's no chance that that dude is staying on the roster, and and, and we're gonna call up an extra guy and not use him in a laugher when we're down by by seventeen. Yeah, like the dude should have came in and just thrown seven, eight, nine, or at least eight, nine. And I know they went to Eduardo Escobar, which like, I don't know. He pitched well, he pitched well. Sure. Um, sure. <laughs> no, with that yeah. being said, I think we, we got our rants out of the way here for everybody. I know everybody loves listening to the rants. We got the rants out of the way. You're good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm glad we weren't scared of that team. That's for sure. <laughs> all right. All right. So with that being said, let's, let's move on to, uh, on to the next series here. Angels bring in, uh, the Cincinnati Reds, which is always fun to see teams like that come into town. I kind of like this matchup for the Angels here a little bit. It's it's the Reds team that isn't playing the best baseball. Um, good baseball still, but not the best baseball that they've played all year for sure. It's a young team. It's an inexperienced team, especially late in the season here. And the Angels have a chance to to uh, to to have some fun with them. First game is Lucas Giolito against – is that Grant Ashcraft? Is that, is that yep. is it Grant? That's what I uh, thought. Grant uh, Yep, game two is a fun matchup against a couple lefties, Reed Detmers and Andrew Abbott. Um, like I said, a lot of fun there. Detmers is coming off a real Grand. stellar start, and, and uh, Abbott is. Uh, I have watched a lot of Abbott down the minors. Down the in Virginia Dublin. kid, he's yeah, still he's, the ball well. Yeah, he's very he's he's a lot of fun for sure. And then uh, game three, um, Shohei Otani going against the uh, elusive TBD for the Cincinnati Reds. There, I like that matchup. Anytime you can throw Shohei Otani out there, you know you got a chance to win. Um, possibility of Mike Trout coming back as well this series. I have a weird feeling that uh, it might happen here Monday or Tuesday. So with that being said, Nate, I I, I kind of like the way the Angels match up in this series a little bit. I know it's you're playing a team above 500 and the Angels haven't had a lot of success against them, but um, I do kind of like it. You're throwing your three dudes out there. I'd, I'd have to say, I know, you know, Reed Demers has been up and down, but looks, seems like he's found a little something here after that last start. And then Lucas Giolito's Lucas Giolito, and then you have Shohei Otani, who is uh, Shohei Otani. So, um, how are you feeling about this series? I don't love the game two matchup with Abbott. Abbott's been really good. He's tough on lefties. We, you know, yep. you, our best hitter is left handed. You got the kid who's left handed. Like, there's a bunch of lefties in the lab. So, that's going to be a tough one. Ashcraft is throwing the ball well. I mean, Grant, Grant throws the ball really hard. He, mm-hmm. he could be tough for the Angels because of the swing and miss with, with a lot of guys. Um, I, Ellie De La Cruz is going to be fun to see. Um, they have a good young team, man. That's a that's, yeah, that's a team. Matt McClain coming home. Yeah. Uh, you know, SoCal kid. So th- this is going to be an interesting series. I think the Angels. I think I, I don't know how you can win two of three after losing eighteen to four. Uh, the record is twenty one, by the way, if given up, and the worst loss is eighteen. So they almost got to that, but. I, I think the Angels went two out of three somehow. I do. I I think Ashcraft throws the ball well, but they blow it. And then I think they win the Otani game. Like that, that's great. Pretty, I, gonna... I, I think it's three fun matchups. I mean, well, I, you don't know who's throwing in, in game three, but anytime again, I'm gonna show you Otani's pitching, that's fun. Um the game two matchups, a heck of a lot of fun. Like those are two young, young, very good lefties there that have a lot of strikeout, um, strikeout potential. Um and then game one's not nothing to nothing to laugh about either Giolito against Ashcraft so um yeah I, I think the Angels pull out two or three here um we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes there they you know they could play like they did against Tampa Bay so with all that being said guys thank you so much for listening and watching this podcast go ahead and hit that subscribe button um and you can go ahead and follow us on all our social medias x 
Instagram and Facebook. You can follow myself on Twitter, X, Jared underscore Tim's, Nate at Nate Green 34. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. Mm-hmm.